Hi there, I am Sumit Bansal and in today's video, I am going to tell you about Pivot Cache. Now, if you do not know what Pivot Cache is, let me quickly explain. When you create Pivot Table in Excel, something called Pivot Cache is automatically generated and that Pivot Cache is then used to create the Pivot Table. So you have your source data, Excel automatically takes a snapshot of that data, puts it as the Pivot Cache, which again holds your entire source data and uses this cache to create your Pivot Table. Now, Pivot Cache is something that you cannot see, you cannot access it, but it's still there in the backend, actually making your pivot tables work. Now, the next logical question is, why even have Pivot Cache? And the reason is efficiency. So when you have pivot tables and you have seen that when you drag and drop items in the rows or columns or values area, it automatically updates instantly. And the reason for that is Pivot Cache because your pivot table does not have to go back to your source data and then take the data from there. It actually has this snapshot that doesn't changes called Pivot Cache that is used to quickly update those pivot tables. So having this Pivot Cache makes your pivot tables really fast. Now in this video, I'm going to show you some amazing pivot cache hacks that you should definitely know if you use pivot tables. So let's see what these are. So here I have this Excel table that has more than 800,000 rows of data and I've used this to create this pivot table here. Now, this file, when I saved this file, it was more than 23 MB. And if I have to share this over an email or with other people on a network drive, this is going to be considered as a large file. Now, if you want to make the size smaller, what you can do is completely delete your source data and your pivot table would still work. And the reason for this is because there is pivot cache in the backend that is going to drive the pivot table. See what happens when I delete this data sheet there is no data now in this, but although you just see the pivot table, there is pivot cache in the backend. So see what happens when I drag region here in the rows area, it automatically updates my pivot table or I drag it in the columns area. You can see that my pivot table automatically updates. So pivot cache is still working in the backend. And now when I save this file, it is only one MB, which also tells you that pivot cache is not just a snapshot of your source data. It's actually a very compressed version of your data. So if you want to reduce your Excel file size and you have a large data set, first create your pivot table and then feel free to delete the data source. Now, one thing you need to know is because I have deleted my source data, my pivot cache is now fixed. I cannot make changes to my pivot cache because I cannot access it. So if you have something where you need static data that is not going to change, you can delete your source data and your pivot table is still going to work. Now, the next question you may have is what if you want your source data back? That's trick number two. So here I have the pivot table and I have deleted the source data. So you can see I just have one sheet that has pivot table and there is obviously pivot cache in the backend. Now the file size has been reduced and let's say I share it with my colleague, but that person wants the source data back. So let me show you how to get this. So in this case, I already have the grand total rows and columns, but if you do not have it, you can go to the design tab and here you have the grand total dropdown where you can choose this option on for rows and columns and it is going to show you the grand total rows and columns. Now. I have this cell at the bottom right part of the pivot table that gives me the summation of all the rows in my data set. And if I want my original data set back, all I need to do is double click on this cell. So in the values area in your pivot table, whichever values details you want, you can just double click on it. So if I double click on this one, it is going to only give me the rows that give me the details of how pivot table has calculated this value. So because this part, the bottom right part of the cell has all the rows data, I can just double click on it. See what happens? When I double click on it, it inserts a new sheet and it gives me the entire data set. So it will tell me this uh, header, which is details of sum of revenue. And if I check, I, you can see there are more than 800,000 rows of data that was given back to me. So even if you delete your source data and you share the file with someone else, they can easily get back the source data. As I mentioned earlier, there is no way for you to actually see or access pivot cache. Now, in case you're working with a file that has a lot of pivot tables and pivot cache and you want to optimize it. So you want to make sure that there are no additional pivot cache that are not being used and you want to clear it up. How do you even know how many total number of pivot cache are there? To do that, we are going to use a simple VBA trick. So here I'm going to go to the developer tab and click on this visual basic icon. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt F11. So hold the Alt key and press the F11 key. So it is going to open this VB editor. Now here I'm going to click on the view tab and then click on immediate window. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Control G. So hold the Control key and then use the G key. It opens this immediate window. Now immediate window is where I can get immediate results to any line of code I put here. So I would start with a question mark because question mark 
tells VBA uh, to give me the result of the line I'm about to give it. And then I would use active workbook dot pivot caches dot count. Now, once you have written this line, put the cursor at the end of this line and then hit enter. And when I do that, it is going to give me a number that will tell me how many pivot cache are there in my file. Now, I expect there to be only one pivot cache. There is one, which is fine. But in case there are, let's say, two or three, it means that there are more pivot cache that are there in the backend that can be cleaned and the size of the file can be reduced. Now, what if you want to know how many total number of pivot tables and pivot cache are there so that there's a match or maybe you're working with a lot of pivot tables. In that case, instead of working with the immediate window, let me give you a proper code and that code will be put in the module. So we will go to the insert option here and then click on module. And here we are going to copy paste the code. So I already have copied the code here and I will give you the code in the description. And if you want to know what this code does, it does very simple thing. It just counts the total number of pivot tables and pivot cache and then shows you a message box that just shows you the number of pivot table and pivot cache. So I have this code here. And when I run this code, see what happens. It shows me this message box that, that tells me that there is one pivot table and one pivot cache in this file. So if you're working with a lot of pivot table and pivot cache, this trick might be helpful. And you may see me using this VBA code in some of the tricks later in this video. So here I have this data. Let's do one thing. Let's create a pivot table first. So I would select any cell here, go to the insert tab and then click on pivot table. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt N V T. So it will also again give you this pivot table from table or range dialog box. And here let's insert the pivot table in a new worksheet. So when I click OK, I have this pivot table and let's populate this quickly. So maybe I can have retailer type here, customer name here, revenue here. So I have this pivot table. Now, I want another pivot table using the same data source. Now I can go back to my data source and create the pivot table again. But what I will do is I can simply copy this pivot table and then I can paste it wherever I want. Maybe let's say I want to paste it here. Now it's not a good idea to paste it right next to each other or down below, maybe insert it in a new worksheet, but I just want to show you what happens. Now I have these two pivot tables. Now for the purpose of efficiency, when I copy and paste a pivot table in the same workbook, Excel does not create a separate cache for each of these pivot tables. It actually shares the cache. Now we can check it because we created the code earlier. So let me go to the VB editor and let's quickly check how many pivot tables and how many pivot cache we have. So when I run this code, you can see it says there are two pivot tables, but there is only one pivot cache, which means that the same cache is being shared between these two pivot tables. Now, this is very good for efficiency because it's not bloating my file. There is only one compressed pivot cache, but there are a few things you need to know. When there is one cache that is being shared by multiple pivot tables, when you refresh one pivot table, it is going to refresh all the pivot tables. For example, in this case, let's change the pivot table here a little. So let me drag this and make this slightly bigger. And also let's change the structure of this one. So I'll go to pivot table analyze, click on field list. And here in this pivot table, instead of retailer type and customer, let's uh, change this to region. So I'll put region here in columns. So I have these two pivot tables where in column, in one case, I have the retailer type. In one case, I have the region. Now let's go back to the data and let's actually change the data. So let me just duplicate this data, just extend this data. So now I have this same data set, uh, but you can see the numbers have changed because I've just copy pasted some of the rows. Now, if I come here and I refresh it, you will notice that it is going to refresh pivot table one as well as pivot table two. So you cannot have two separate pivot tables and have a different uh, refresh mechanism when it, it's sharing the pivot cache. See what happens when I come here and I refresh this one, you'll see both of these files, both of these pivot tables have refreshed. So this is a good thing, but if you do not want it, then I'll show you how to make these two pivot tables separate and have a separate cache. But when there are pivot tables that are sharing cache, they will all refresh together. The second thing is when you create a slicer, you can actually control both of these pivot tables with the same slicer. Let me show you how. So here I'm going to go to the insert tab again and then click on the slicer option. Now in this case, let's do it with customer or maybe retailer type. Now, when I click OK, it gives me this uh, slicer. Now, this slicer right now is only going to control this pivot table on the left because this is the one I had selected. See what happens when I click on multi-line, it only shows me this. But this does not refresh, this does not filters with the slicer. But because there is a same cache for both of these, I can easily connect this slicer 
to the pivot table on the right. See, I can just right click, go to report connections. And when you see multiple pivot table names under the same slicer connection properties, it means that they both or whatever number of uh, pivot tables are listed here, they all share the same pivot cache. So here I can just click on this, click OK, and you can see now both of them are going to work with the same slicer. So if you have multiple pivot tables that are sharing the same slicer, you can have one single slicer and connect all of these pivot tables with the same slicer so that you can easily filter them in one go. So here I have this pivot table and the data and let's say I want to move this pivot table to a new workbook. And this could be useful if you're working with a workbook that has a lot of pivot tables and you want to pick one pivot table and put it in a separate workbook. Now you do not need to first transfer the data and create the pivot table. As we saw, if I just copy paste and copy paste this pivot table in the same workbook, it is going to create another pivot table. The same can be done with a new workbook as well. So in this case, if I open a new workbook here and I just come here and I paste the pivot table, you can see it has instantly pasted the pivot table. And because there is a working pivot table, it also means that even the pivot cache has been copied. So as soon as you copy and paste pivot table, it will carry over the pivot cache as well. So here, if I want to check, I can go to the VB editor. And in this case, let me copy this and put this in a new module for this one. And if I run this code here, you can see it says one pivot table and one pivot cache. Because to be honest, pivot table will not work if there is no data and there is no pivot cache. But in this case, I just got the pivot table and pivot cache. What if I also want to get the data? Again, very simple. We have the grand total column here. You can just double click on this one and it is going to instantly give me the entire data set that was used to create this pivot table. Now, this will also work when you are moving uh, a sheet that has a pivot table. So for example, if I have a workbook and I move a, a sheet from there that has pivot table to another workbook, it would also carry the pivot cache with it. So here I have a pivot table and you can see I've customized the pivot table a little. So I've created these groups where uh, first group has these four customers, then they, these six are there in group two and then the remaining are in group three. Now, if I want to create a copy of this pivot table, because let's say I want a different view, if I just copy and paste this pivot table, as I showed you earlier, this is going to share the same pivot cache. Now this is more efficient in most cases because you do not need to have multiple pivot cache that will bloat your Excel file. But in this case, let's say I want to create a different grouping now in this pivot table. I cannot do this because grouping of these customers, grouping of dates, inserting calculated fields and calculated uh, items, this is done on a cache level. So it will be implemented on all the pivot tables that are sharing that cache. In this case, it would make more sense for me to have a completely different pivot table that although uses the same data source, but has a different cache. So let me show you how to do that. So let me remove this. Now, if I just go back to my data source here and create a pivot table, it will create a pivot table that will share the same pivot cache because of the efficiency. But I will have to force this now to create a different pivot cache. So to do that, I'm going to use this keyboard shortcut Alt D P. So first press the Alt key, then the D key, then the P key. It is an old Excel version shortcut that is going to open this pivot table and pivot chart wizard where you can select what you want. In this case, I'm going to uh, select the first option and pivot table. Then I would click on next. And here I would select this entire table. And now when I click on next, it asks me where I want the pivot table. I would choose new worksheet. And now when I click on finish, it inserts a new uh, pivot table here. But now this pivot table has a different cache. So let me show you uh, the proof of that. So let me quickly generate a simple pivot table here. Let's put revenue here. So now let's go back to the, the VB editor. And here I'm going to run this code, which tells me how many pivot tables and pivot cache we have. And you can see it tells me there are two pivot tables and two separate pivot caches, which means that now I can make the customizations separately on both the pivot tables, despite the fact that they share the same pivot cache. Another trick that many people use that uh, is not as easy as using this keyboard shortcut, but again, uh, good to know is let's say I want to create a pivot table from this. What I can do is I can copy this pivot table and paste it here. So right now it is sharing the pivot cache, but I would go to the pivot table analyze uh, tab here and then click on change data source. And here click on change data source option. And in this case, I'm going to add a couple of additional rows. And when I do that, it is going to now have a separate pivot cache for this one. Now let's check if that happens or not. So I would go and come here and then run this code. And you can see it says three pivot tables, three pivot caches. But I added a couple of additional rows and I don't want it. So you can go back now 
to again come back to pivot table analyze tab click on change source data and here you can change it back to whatever it was originally and then it would still have a separate pivot cache so just by adding a new row we have tricked excel in understanding that we are using a separate data source so create a different pivot cache and then we revert it back to the original data source so, so these are two methods you can use to quickly create pivot tables that are using the same data source but have separate pivot cache now, although pivot tables are very fast, when you're working with a very large data set, you may notice that whenever you choose an option and you make a change in the pivot table, it takes a few seconds. And that is happening because every time you make a change, pivot table goes back to the pivot cache, checks the data, makes the changes, and then gives you the result in the pivot table layout. But in some cases, just to save some time, you may not want it to update every time you're making a change. So what you can do is here is an option right at the bottom of pivot, pivot table fields pane. It's called defer layout update. And when you check this option, when you're making changes to your pivot table, it is not going to instantly update. For example, if I come here and I add profit here and I, let's say, add retailer type here, it is not going to instantly update. It will wait for me to make all the changes and then I can manually come here and click on update. And now when I click update, it is then going to change my pivot table. So this will take time of course, but this just takes time once because now your pivot table is going back to your pivot cache only once. But if you do not do this, it goes back every time. Now, as I said, in most cases, this is fine. But if you're working with a large data set and a pivot table that is slow, this could be very useful. Now let me show you some interesting pivot cache options in the pivot table settings. So here I have this pivot table. So I would right click on any of these cells and then go to pivot table options. And this opens the pivot table options dialog box. Now here I have all these tabs. And if I click on data, it is going to show me these three options in pivot table data. Now these are interesting options where the first one is save source data with file. Now what happens is whenever you are closing your file, it is going to save the pivot cache automatically with that file. So the next time when you open the file, your pivot cache would already be there. So you can just start using the pivot table. But in case you want to save some space and you do not want the pivot cache to be saved with the pivot table, you can uncheck this option. So this means that when you close your file, it is not going to save the pivot cache with the file. But the problem in this case is when you next time open that file again, your pivot table is now it's not connected to anything. There is no pivot cache and it's not connected to the pivot table original data source. So in that case, you will have to either rebuild the pivot cache or you can make sure that this option is checked, which is refresh data when opening the file, which means that whenever you save your file, pivot cache is not saved. You save some space, your file size is low. And when you open that file, it is going to automatically rebuild that pivot cache. So this will save you a little bit of file space. Now, in case you are connecting your file with an external data source that is a slow data source, maybe a web page or you're connected, connected to another Excel file or a database, when you open the file and it refreshes automatically to rebuild the pivot cache, it might be slow. So sometimes you actually want to have the settings in this way where you keep the, uh, the source data, but you uncheck the refresh data when opening the file option, which means that when the file opens, it is not going to refresh. It is not going to try and connect to the original data source. And then if the data source is slow, it will not make your file slow. So you can choose when to connect and when to refresh your file, but it will not happen when you open the file. So this could be something that could make your file a little faster. So these are all the pivot cache hacks I wanted to share with you. I hope you've picked some useful ones and you can use them in your day to day pivot table work. Also, please do me a favor. If you found something useful in this video, please let me know in the comment section. That's it in this video and I'll see you in the next video.